you can think of mechanism design theory as the engineering part of economics. A lot of economics is concerned with taking existing economic institutions and trying to predict or explain the outcomes that those institutions generate. This is a very important part of economics. It's called the positive part. Uh, but mechanism design, it does just the opposite of positive economics. Rather than uh, starting with the institutions and predicting the outcomes, uh, in mechanism design, we start by identifying the outcomes we would like to have, and then we work backwards to figure out what institutions would generate those outcomes. Uh, so it's, it's economics in reverse, if you like. Here is an important example of mechanism design in action. Over the last uh, 15 to 20 years, many countries around the world have realized that uh, it's important to privatize the radio spectrum. In most countries, the, the, the radio spectrum, uh, radio frequencies were owned by the government, but it was realized that this was inefficient because there were many private telecom companies who could use this spectrum in order to create the, the telecom revolution that we've actually experienced. And so beginning in the mid-1990s, uh, many countries started transferring radio spectrum from the public sphere to the private sphere. But an important goal in making this transfer was ensuring that the companies who valued the spectrum the most would actually end up with, uh, with this spectrum. And uh, achieving this goal uh, was not uh, so straightforward. So suppose that you're in, in, the, in the shoes of the government. You have a license uh, for broadcasting on, on a particular uh, band of frequencies. You want to put this in the hands of the company that values it the most, but you don't know uh, which company that is. Uh, now, how, how can you uh, achieve the goal? Well, you could ask each company, how much do you value uh, the license? The problem is that if you just ask this naive question, you're not likely to get an accurate answer because each company is likely to exaggerate its value in order to increase the chance that it will, it will end up with the license. So this, this rather naive mechanism uh, won't work very well. Somewhat more sophisticated mechanism would be to have each company make a bid uh, that is state how much it's willing to pay for the license and then award the license to the company that makes the highest bid and have that company pay its bid. That's an improvement over the first mechanism. Uh, now companies will not have an incentive to exaggerate their statements anymore, but uh, they will now have an incentive to understate. Uh, let, me, let me illustrate that. Suppose that you're a company uh, that attaches a $10 million value to the license. Well, will you bid $10 million? No, you won't, because if you, bet, if you bid $10 million and you win, you will be getting something worth $10 million, but you will be paying $10 million, and so your net benefit is zero. You might as well have not bothered to bid in the first place. So actually, you will underbid. You will bid less than $10 million. But if all of the companies are bidding less than $10 million, then there's no guarantee, or less than their true value. Different companies might have different values. If companies are all underbidding, there's no guarantee that the company that actually has the highest value uh, will win. So that mechanism won't work either. And the question is, what mechanism will work? Well, it turns out that there's a, there's a very simple but very clever mechanism uh, that, that will work. Um, and it involves each company making a bid and awarding the license to the company making the highest bid, 
but now instead of paying its own bid, if, if it's the high bidder, the company pays the second highest bid. So suppose there are three companies, one bids 10 million, another bids 8 million, a third bids 7 million. The company that bid, bids 10 million will win because that's the highest bid, but it will pay only 8 million that's the second highest bid. Now I claim that in this mechanism each company has an incentive to bid exactly what the license is worth to it. Notice that the, if, if the license is worth 10 million to a company um, it now ha no longer has the incentive to underbid, to bid less than 10 million because it's not paying its bid anyway if it wins. If, if it bids 10 million, if it bids 9 million it's going to pay eight million either way if eight million is the second highest bid. So there's no value to underbidding. Furthermore, there's a risk to underbidding that if you if you if you bid less than ten million, say you bid eight million, some other company might bid nine million, and now you now the ten million dollar company w will lose the license altogether. Whereas if it had bid 10 million, it would have won and had a $1 million profit, 10 million minus 9 million. So underbidding is never beneficial and it can actually be harmful. Similarly, a company is never going to want to overbid, to bid more than the license is worth to that company, say bid 12, 12 million, because now there's a risk that some other company might bid 11 million with a $12 million bid, you will win, but you will pay $11 million. That's the second highest bid, which is too much. It's only worth $10 million to you. So you don't want to bid over your value either. You don't want to underbid. You don't want to overbid. Each company will bid exactly what the license is worth to that company, and therefore the winning bid will, go, will, will be... Uh, to the company that has the highest value. In other words, the government can realize its objective of assigning the license to the company with the highest value even though it doesn't know which company that is in advance. That's what mechanism is all about. Trying to achieve your goals even though you as the mechanism designer lack critical information to do that directly. You have to do it indirectly through a mechanism. Now, mechanism design was uh, uh, a uh, subject that started in the early 1960s. The two founding fathers of the subject were uh, William Vickery. Vic Vickery was the one who invented the second price or second highest price mechanism that I described a few minutes ago, uh, and uh, Leonid Hurwicz, uh, who was interested in how mechanism design could uh, illuminate the contrast between centrally planned and market economies. Since then, the, the uh, field has grown enormously. It's now a central part of economic theory and it's used for applications uh, ranging from privatization, uh, that was the example I gave before, to uh, achieving uh, international agreements on uh, treaties. Uh, if, if we ever have an agreement on on greenhouse gas emissions, mechanism design will play an important role. It's used for the design of regulations, uh, finan financial regulations use, use mechanism design theory, and it's used for uh, reforms in voting methods, uh, uh, in, in reforming, for example, the way that presidents or uh, other public officials uh, might be elected. So the, the range of potential applications of mechanism design is huge. Uh, it's a very active field now, 50 years uh, after it started. I expect that 50 years from now it will still be active. One thing that we know from, uh, from psychologists is that 
actual uh, uh, human beings, actual people, are not uh, as fully rational as uh, we theorists would like them to be. That is, in, in, in reality, people make a lot of mistakes in, in decision making. That's important to take into account when designing mechanisms. No, notice that in, in, uh, in mechanisms, uh, companies or people have to take some actions in, in, in the, in the uh, mechanism I described a few minutes ago, companies were making bids. Well, uh, you want mechanisms to still work reasonably well even if people or companies are making mistakes in, their, in, in the way they bid, in the, in the actions they take. And so designing robust mechanisms, mechanisms that still work pretty well, uh, even if people and companies make mistakes, uh, is a major challenge uh, in contemporary research on mechanism design.